So how does a naturalist get around this? Well, the same reason anyone's going to get around this is that you're going to introduce some metaphysical stuff into your worldview that gets around these chaotic universes, that says these chaotic universes can't happen. But I really want, uh, I would really like to hear what the naturalist would introduce for this, th these metaphysical, um, pr I, I would, I guess, um, metaphysical theses that are going to stop all these chaotic universes from being added to their, um, the probability space. Because once they do it, like say they think that um, uh, the, all substances are fundamentally particles and particles of X, Y, Z causal powers at all times. And that's why all these chaotic universes can't happen. If you give me some thesis like that, well, that's going to annihilate um, a lot of this gray area here because Conway's game of life, um, for example, isn't made of particles. Or you say something about the initial state of the universe and why, and um, you describe to me what causal powers it has and say it's metaphysically necessary that will get rid of the chaos, but it will also get rid of a large chunk of the gray. So that's kind of, that's, um, I think, a an interesting kind of Goldilocks uh, problem that the naturalist has as well, because if their metaphys the metaphysical theses that they adopt are so um, strict that they restrict us to the only the stuff physicists have, stubber, st sorry, have studied, then, well, the uh, theist is going to win out over the naturalist. But if the metaphysical theses aren't, strict enough then they're going to include bits of the or they're going to include chaotic universes in the um epistemic probability space which is going to uh, win out over the fog mm -hmm. Does that so make just sense? to sum yeah so just to summarize squared i just like where you're coming from so if i'm getting this right so like one of james's big uh, objections to the fine tuning argument which we played near like the beginning here is the idea that we just have no idea if like other kinds of life could come about say like maybe like silicon life or like maybe like something in like the quantum level or something like that uh just like these other kinds that we just have no idea because we haven't investigated and what you're saying is well we can grant that's possible because it seems like potentially like yeah things could go right and maybe we get life that's interesting in that kind of like form but there's also if we grant that there's also a lot of ways surrounding that kind of universe or environment that it's going to go wrong and there's just going to be no life um and it's not going to be interesting it's like the more kind kinds of life actually isn't going to be that helpful with like trying to counter the fine tuning argument because every time you introduce something that could go right there's a lot more ways that it could go wrong is that kind of like the gist of what you're getting at that was like yeah one point before Th this point i'm currently trying to make is basically like well also what are you going to allow uh, as a possibility, are you going to allow universes that don't act, aren't actually governed by physical laws? Obviously, mm -hmm. you're not going to allow that. So um, you're going to have to give me some metaphysical thesis to say to uh, uh, outlaw um, universes that don't follow any sort of physical laws yet are nonetheless physical. And um, once you do that, though, those metaphysical theses could very well uh, rip up the, or sorry, outlaw a bunch of the the foggy stuff as well. So then the theist is at, at, in better standing. There's less gray for mm -hmm. them to have to worry about.